I was walking home with a bag of groceries when, there it was, right in front of me, locked to a signpost. My stolen bike! I approached the bike and looked it over to make sure it was in fact mine. It had to be mine. I'd never even seen another 1960s Eaton Road King, and it was just as I remembered it. Immediately, my mind streamed with questions. What do I do? Should I wait here until the rider returns? Do I even want to interact with this person? What if it's some nut job? The bike could be locked here all week, or it could be locked here for just two minutes. I decided I needed to act quickly. I wanted my bike back, and just as much, I wanted to hear the other side of the story. Of course, I also wanted to avoid any sort of unpleasant altercation. So, with that in mind, I ran home, pulled out the first pen I could find, and scrawled a note on a scrap of paper. The note read, This bike was stolen from my apartment on September 4th, 2009. This bike was my grandfather's, and so it has tremendous sentimental value for me, and I'd like it back. You may simply remove your lock, or, if you wish to communicate, you can reach me at grandpasbike at gmail.com. Of course, if you're an innocent player in this, I do apologize for any inconvenience. With note in hand, I went to my closet and pulled out my hefty D-lock. I hesitated, realizing that I may be about to ruin someone's day. Doing this can mean the person riding the bike misses a critical job interview, or can't get to their dying mother's bedside. I don't know. It could mean all kinds of things. I recalled the day my bike was stolen, and how frustrating and inconvenient it had been for me. How, on a practical level, I was pissed off for being denied my favorite and only means of transportation. On an emotional level, I was upset as I could be over the loss of any material possession. I resolved that there was a good chance that the person who locked the bicycle to that signpost was the very same person who pinched it a year earlier. And, even if the person riding my bike now wasn't the lowlife who stole it, he or she would probably understand and be interested in my story. After all, instead of a lock and a note, I could be marching out there with a pair of bolt cutters and a burning sense of justification. Comfortable with my reasoning, I raced back out to my bike, slapped on the lock, and duct taped my little note to it. I couldn't wait to hear back from whoever had my bike. Immediately, I went home and waited for an email. It took several hours, but the message finally appeared. It read, The bike was a birthday gift from my boyfriend, who's recently moved to the other side of the country. I've had it for six months, and it's my only source of transportation. It has sentimental value for me as well. I understand that you want the bike, but was it really necessary to put a lock on it? I depend on this bike to get to my jobs on time. A letter alone would have sufficed. So here we are with an interesting situation. I need this bike to get around. I don't have the money for another one, nor am I some kind of thieving jerk who would steal another. I don't know what you plan to do if I decide not to give it to you. However, the community police station is close by, and I'm sure they'd be happy to remove your lock. I'm sorry this happened to you, if in fact this is your grandfather's bicycle, but honestly, I'm a poor girl who loves her bike. I don't know what to do. Got any ideas? I got off work at 8 and need to get to my other job, so I suppose you have till then to contact me. D. An interesting situation indeed. I felt she was lying. Her boyfriend, the gift giver, was conveniently unavailable, And, you know, she'd threatened to go to the police, and with good reason, but hadn't. It seemed obvious that she was lying. I thought about it more. I hadn't gone to the police either, and her story could be true. I had no evidence, only suspicion. Critically, she had no way to tell that my story was true either, so I needed to respond. I hear your agony about not having a means of transportation. That bike was my only means of transportation as well. And the bike was given to me because, at the time, I couldn't afford to buy one for myself either. So I can empathize with your situation. Can you find out from your boyfriend where it was purchased? I'd love to know who's selling stolen bikes. And regarding the police, I'm not sure why they'd remove my lock and not yours. Curiously. See, when I was done typing, I dug up a photo of the bike on my computer and attached it to the email to give her a reason to believe my story. It didn't take long for D to retort. I can't just give you the bike. I'd be screwed without it. I'm sorry that you were screwed when some asshole stole the bike. That really sucks. But in the same respect, you'd be doing me the same injustice by demanding I give it to you. I believe the bike was purchased on Main Street, but I don't have a receipt to prove that. It was a gift. And man, we can keep arguing, 
But there's no solution here. D. It appeared we were in a standoff. Her willingness to communicate was probably a good sign. And if nothing else, I felt like the more we talked, the less likely it was that either of us would act rashly and cut off the other's lock. I was having trouble with the ethics and nuances of our little situation. If her story was true, did I feel that she was faultless? And what about her boyfriend? Where did he fit in? Clearly the blame is more squarely on the bike shop, if that's indeed where he got it. To me, our scenario was fascinating. Thinking about ownership and entitlement made me feel that we were engaged in a sort of mini-social experiment. I couldn't help but think about property rights and private versus public ownership, these kinds of issues. It forced me to think about what it means to, to own something. What is mine? With these thoughts and feelings mingling inside me, I composed another response. The bike was in my possession for more than a year, and belonged to my grandfather for more than 40 years before that. So I'm not sure what kind of appeal you believe you're making when you say that you've been in possession of my stolen bike for six months. As for injustice, under the circumstances, I don't feel that I'm committing any injustice. And I'm not even seeing any relevant parallel between our scenarios either. I inherited my grandfather's bike. Best case scenario, your boyfriend bought a stolen bike. I had my bike stolen, you have yours, or mine, attached to a pole for the moment and right where you left it. C. It was getting on, nearly 7 o'clock, and it looked as though our problem wasn't going to be resolved before her 8 o'clock deadline. I knew that she was upset. I'd likely messed up her day. And while I didn't agree with her take on the situation, I wasn't really offering any solid options either. 7 o'clock came and went, followed quickly by 8 and, and then 9. I sat on my bed stewing, thinking about what to do. How long could this go on? I decided that the bike was safe. She couldn't know that I wasn't watching it, waiting to pounce at the first sign of disturbance. And I assumed cutting the lock out in plain view would be pretty nerve-wracking for most people. Also, I figured it would probably be hard to track down a pair of bolt cutters at short notice, late in the day on a Saturday. It wasn't until 10.30 that I finally received a reply. Well, Jesus, what do you want me to do? I need this bike. I'd be more than happy to give the bike to you if you'd be willing to replace it. I didn't rip your bike off, and I don't know why the hell I have to defend myself to some guy. Bikes get stolen, buddy. I've had two stolen from me in a year and a half, but that doesn't give me the right to make assumptions about the people riding them now. So get me a bike, man. Either that or forget about it. D. This was going nowhere. I hadn't expected such a response. In fact, I hadn't given much thought at all to how she might react. But bikes get stolen, buddy, seems to totally miss the point. And give me another bike and I'll give you yours back didn't even make sense to me. Wouldn't I lose twice in that scenario? Should I take these emails and my photograph of the bike to the police and get them to sort it out? I didn't see how they could help. I hadn't recorded a serial number for the bike. I hadn't registered the bike with the police. I hadn't reported the bike stolen. I had no evidence of any wrongdoing by this person. And besides that, I wanted two human beings to resolve their sticky situation without resorting to force or running off to the nearest authority figure. If her story was true, I wanted us both to get what we needed and to do so without either of us having to lose anything in the process. But I wondered, is that even possible? I didn't have the answer. I needed to sleep on it. As I'd hoped, the following morning I woke with the solution. When I climbed out of bed, I immediately checked my email inbox. It was empty. Next, I needed to confirm that the bike was still there, so I threw on some clothes and went for a walk. From a distance, I could see that the bike was still in place. As I got closer, I noticed that she had attached another lock to it. I chuckled to myself as I walked past. Confused as ever, I couldn't imagine what she was thinking. I returned home and found an email that read, I absolutely refuse to give you this bike without compensation for my loss. If you want this bike so much, you'd think you'd be a nice enough guy to trade for it. Where's the injustice in that? I just really don't understand your flawed logic. D. Clearly, we are not going to see eye to eye on this. I reread our whole dialogue. I felt that her story was a lie. If I received a gift and then encountered someone who seemed to have evidence that not only was the item stolen, but that they were the rightful owner, I'd be eager to get to the bottom of it. However, whether or not she was lying didn't change my plan. I tapped out what I hoped would be my final email to her for a while. I wrote, 
I am simply unable to buy you a bike. Had I the means, I would still be unwilling. However, my desire for this bike is entirely emotional, as I have a bike I can borrow when I need it. You, on the other hand, need a bike to get around on. So, if I remove the lock, will you commit to returning the bike to me when you're done with it? Whenever that is, next month, next year, or ten years from now. This, to me, seems like an equitable solution. You get what you need, and I get what I need, neither of us having to lose anything in the process. Thoughts? C. She didn't reply until that evening. Her message read, When I can afford to get a new bike, I'll be happy to return this one to you. I don't know when that'll be, however, so I guess you should keep this email account up and running. D. Feeling hopeful and content, I immediately went back out and removed my lock. Of course, there was a good chance that I wouldn't get the bike back. However, I felt that it was just as likely that I'd be riding Grandpa's bike again one of these days.